Okay, I'm going to talk about transcutaneous spinal cord stimulation for the treatment of spasticity. We call it um, C-spin in Icelandic. And um, transcutaneous means that the stimulation is going through the skin, from the surface of the skin to the structure beneath. I'm going to talk about the, um, the research question, or formulate it shortly. Then what is, what are we doing? What is the therapy and the assessment? A little bit about the results. And I think I'll just skip the discussion and conclusions. So our main uh, in, uh, research question is, can TSCS, the transcutaneous spinal cord stimulation, be applied as a non-invasive neuro-augmentative intervention? Meaning, can we reduce the spasticity of the lower limbs and can we uh, facilitate walking by people with spinal cord injury and spastic but able to stand up and walk? There are other questions, uh, for example, uh, does spinal cord stimulation affect the plasticity of the brain? But I'm not going to talk about that today. So this is based on the spinal circuits. Uh, we have in the spinal cord. This is the basic monosynaptic reflex, may, which many of you maybe know. If the doctor hits you with a hammer on the patellar tendon, you will, the muscle will contract and you will kick the foot forward. This is uh, measured in a, a muscle spindle, uh, transmitted to the spinal cord, and you get an action potential going down to the muscle again which will uh, lead to a contraction of that muscle. Now, uh, what we are doing is we are stimulating uh, at this point of uh, space. We stimulate the, um, let's say, the measurement cord, the, the neuron going from the muscle spindle up to the spinal cord. And um, we also stimulate the motor neuron going down to the muscle. Therefore, we get two waves if we measure the EMG on the surface of the skin. One, which is the M wave, going directly from the motor neuron down to the... Uh, that's the first uh, um, wave we see. And then the um, signal which goes up to the spinal cord and comes uh, down the motor neuron. Now, this is not functioning anymore. <laughs> so, uh, and the later... Um, wave uh, called the H reflex um, uh, comes later because it has a longer way to travel uh, until it reaches the uh, muscle. Um, in the spinal cord we have circuitry, uh, neural circuitry that is controlled from the brain and in the case of a spinal cord injury this control is um, uh, compromised. Um, and therefore, the people uh, develop uh, spastic. We believe that we are stimulating at this point of um, space. This is the um, vertebra. And we have uh, the, the, the dorsal uh, uh, roots coming in and the ventral roots. And we believe we are stimulating at this point of um, in the, uh, in the uh, neural system. Um, and our stimulation is similar, or we try to um, replace the effects that comes, or the control that comes from the brain. So this is again a picture of a monosynaptic uh, uh, circle. So we have the length of the muscle. We measure it with a um, sp uh, muscle spindle in the muscle. And we get the signal back to the motor neuron, which lets the muscle contract. Now, this system is both, uh, both the motor part of it and also the measurement part is influenced from the brain. And the brain gets the information from the sp uh, spindle uh, this way. If, this, if these uh, connections are damaged, uh, we are left with a, a neural network that is actually not drawn in this picture. Uh, and with no c control from above, not these two uh, arrows here. And we try to replace that with stimulation. 
Now, so how do we do this? Um, there is some um, evidence uh, that you can uh, treat spastic with stimulation. Uh, that's the, that has been done for decades uh, in various ways. One of the um, ways is the epidural stimulation. Then you put an electrode into the spinal cord channel uh, and you stimulate there. That was done originally to treat uh, pain, but uh, also turned out to be uh, good for spastic reduction. So now what we are trying to do is instead of going into the spinal cord channel, we place our electrodes on the surface of the skin, uh, two electrodes on the back above T11 and T12. We are actually aiming at the space between T11 and T12 and the opposite electrode in the front of the belly at the height of the nubbly. What's that in English? <laughs> what? Label. And um, we are stimulating underneath T11 uh, and 12. We have the lumbar uh, areas of the spinal cord, and th those are the ones we are aiming for. Um, and we get similar results if we look at the signals we got on quadriceps muscle, the frontal muscle on the leg, and the hamstrings. We get similar to the signals you saw in the f uh, slide before. And we stimulate um, 30 minutes a day with a 50 hertz frequency, uh, beef passive pulses, and um, we do that uh, before, uh, before we start with the treatment. We make an assessment, we measure the, uh, sp uh, the spasticity, we treat for, 50, for 30 uh, minutes, then we immediately make another assessment, and then later in the day, either two hours later, or we've also done it four and eight hours later, we make the uh, third assessment in order to be able to see how long the uh, therapy effect lasts. Um, yeah, this is the assessment. I think I'll skip that. It's two. We have had uh, up to nine uh, patients when this uh, slide was made. We have now uh, 12. And uh, they are of both gender and different uh, age. Now, one of the main uh, ways to assess the um, spasticity is to measure, uh, to use so, uh, the so-called Wattenberg pendulum test. We measure in that test the knee angle, and we uh, at the same time registrate the EMG from different muscles. And we expect uh, by a healthy person a uh, symmetrical uh, oscillation of the uh, uh, of the knee. We lift up the foot. It is we drop it and it is uh, moving like a pendulum around the knee joint. In a spastic person, we the drop down the angle would behave like this. The EMG is very diffuse and not. Uh, correlated uh, to the movement. Uh, if we have a normal person, we would have a good uh, oscillation. The upper leg uh, EMG would be by the drop-down phase, and the, um, the, the quadriceps, uh, the hamstring muscle would be in the opposite, when the leg is moving in the opposite direction. And results, well, Green means good results, um, red means bad results, these are the patients, and then different types of spasticity. Okay, and so I'm just going to go to this. Um, so where do I get the so films to show you? So this is uh, before the treatment, the assessment before the treatment. We have a spastic person that can walk. Uh, and um, the physiotherapist lifts the foot and lets it drop. And it moves uh, rather stiffly down. Later in the day at 16.30, this was 9.40, 
16 or 30, five hours after treatment. Um, so I lose the point then. Do you see that? No. So, okay. We do the same test and um, foot is swinging freely. Okay, I think I'll leave it there. Thank you.